For my next Blender Learn Along, I'm going to try to paint the caterpillar model that I made in the last video. My goal is to get smart about how I'm selecting things using masks, or in this case, face sets, in order to select just specific areas of the caterpillar so I only have to paint them once and can make them any color I want after that. I've never used face sets before, but this is a tool that's available in the sculpt mode that we've spent all of our time in so far, so let's explore it. And before I open the file, I want to point out that I downloaded the latest 2.91 version of Blender. Looking at my reference image, I can see a clear top of the caterpillar, a bottom, and then this black ridge that runs through. So I can probably get the general look of this with just three different selections or three different face sets. I'm also going to rename the base model so it's easier to see in the hierarchy. So I'm going to start to learn how to use the draw face sets tool. And right now it just feels like a brush, which is pretty intuitive. I can hold down F and resize the brush like before. But when I click again, it adds a new color, which I know is going to be a different selection. So I'll undo that. And if I hold control, it deletes some of the selection. But if I hold control inside the selection, it'll expand it. So control is a little finicky, but if you drag around the color, you can add. And then if you push from the outside in, you can subtract. I'm just roughly getting the shape of the top. Now I hold down shift to smooth, so I get a nice clean edge around the top. And to show how that becomes a selection, we'll go up to face sets, extract face set. With this eyedropper, I can select that top layer. Even though it disappeared, if I look over to the right, in the hierarchy, I have a new mesh object. I'll rename that top mesh. Under material properties, I want to create a new material and change that base color. Use the eyedropper to capture the color of the caterpillar. And I'll have to turn on viewport shading to see the true color. Mm. It's a little splotchy. Kind of took me a while to figure this one out. I went through a bunch of the settings. And eventually I realized that that was the base model underneath showing through. So if I hide that base model, it's starting to look a lot better. Now I have full control over the color of that mesh. So if I want to make any quick adjustments, it's super easy. Now I'll show the original mesh again. 
and I want to select the lower part of the caterpillar. So I switch back into sculpt mode, start draw. What I didn't realize at this point is I still had the top mesh selected. If you look over in my hierarchy, it's highlighted. So I'll switch to the caterpillar model. And now when I draw, still nothing happens. But I'm in sculpt mode and I have the caterpillar model selected. I remembered that when I was creating this, the lock objects mode prevented me from selecting multiple layers at once. So unlock that. Still nothing. So it would take me a little while to figure this out. I got the order of operations down of selecting the caterpillar model, switching it to object mode, then switching back to sculpt mode. And that seemed to reliably give me the option of painting in another face set. And it shows you where the, the overlap is between the two. So I'll just fill in the bottom and try to clean up that seam a little bit. And so at this point, I'm just remembering that I'm also seeing the base caterpillar model shining through so it doesn't look too great. But I'll go ahead and extract that bottom part. Rename it. And I'll add a new material. And use the eyedropper to get the bottom color, which didn't come out quite right. So I'm just going to dial it in. A little less saturated. And here's the point in which I should have really backed up. When I hid the base caterpillar model, the seam between the top and the bottom was really rough. And what I didn't realize at the time is I didn't smooth the bottom like I had smoothed the top part of the model. But I kept forging ahead, attempting to draw in the ridge now. And this was looking pretty bad too. At this point, I just wanted to have something kind of close, so I kept going. And I extracted that as a face set. And you can see how messed up that mesh is. Very disconnected, just little islands of vertices floating off there. Renamed it. Added a new material. It's not looking good at this point. Now I got kind of stuck because the black base color wasn't coming through for the, the stripe around the caterpillar. Except when I switched it then to, to edit mode, I could see this meshy version of a stripe. And 
you can see just how rough that is. And I have a really dense mesh for this model. I really need to simplify it and remesh it or re-topologize it. But before I deal with all of that, let me go fix some of the obvious mistakes I made. So I'm going to hide all of the previous face sets that I extracted. Let's get a smaller brush. Make sure I can draw on it. Now I'm going back and smoothing out the seam between the top and the bottom. I don't know why I thought about doing these kind of one at a time instead of preparing them all together. That really set me back. Now is also a good time to save the progress we just made and clear out those other face sets that we're not going to use now. And let's see if we can paint in this little seam on the caterpillar. And you see our, our faces in there are really roughly shaped. It's just not coming to get, let's use a, okay, well, with a bigger brush, it's at least flowing more consistently. And if I smooth that out, if, if it can extract it like that, this could work. So I'll go around the whole model and get a selection for that seam. Again, holding control while dragging on an area to expand the selection, then holding shift to smooth the edges. And just as a reminder, clicking that middle mouse button to move around and using a combination of shift and dragging to pan. One on the keyboard to look at it straight on. Now let's start extracting some face sets, naming them as we go. Now with all three of those selections extracted and renamed, I want to add materials to them. So new material, eyedropper to sample the base color, dial it in for the saturation and the value. Also double checking the hue. And since we've already seen this process, I'm going to speed through it a little bit. Okay, that, that actually looks a lot better. And although I think a sculpting tool like face sets could be really useful, especially for separating elements of the sculpt, 
we're not going to be able to add any fine detail to the caterpillar just using face sets. I think for the next iteration, I'm going to need to learn how to retopologize the model in order to make that mesh a lot simpler. And then when I have a really consistent mesh, I'll be able to unwrap it, which is make it 2D, and then control the painting process a lot more thoroughly. I'm looking forward to learning that. I hope you are too. See you next time.